Welcome to the 1UP Nitro National Series playoffs, everybody. A bit of a late start compared to the other series, but seven races remain for 12 drivers to chase for a championship in 2024. And what better place to get them started than at the treacherous Talladega Super Speedway, where danger lurks around every turn and opportunities are everywhere. This is going to be a great race, 47 laps ahead of the drivers on a perfectly clear day. What could be better to start the chase for a championship than right here? And alongside me to bring you all the action, once again, is Duke Gansack for today's race. Well, we got 42 drivers in this race, and any one of them could win today. That is what we love about racing here at Talladega. Yeah, absolutely, and I can't imagine a more chaotic race uh, to start the playoffs than here at Talladega. It's going to be an interesting one because you have all these playoff guys, and every single one of them still has a shot at the championship. Because it's the first race, everybody's within 20 points of each other, the whole top 12. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what everybody's strategy is because today you could take a strategy where you go up front and you get a lot of points in this one, or you stay back and make sure you you don't lose a lot of points in this one, and that is very possible. Uh, danger lurks in every turn here at Talladega Super Speedway. And one thing to note about these cars at Talladega is these cars are the slowest we have at Talladega compared to the superstar cars and the trucks. So it will be harder to generate runs compared to their faster counterparts. It'll be interesting to see who, what that what kind of racing we get, honestly, out of that. Because we have yet to see what these cars can do at Talladega this season. But we're about to find out over the course of 47 laps here today. As we can now bring you the starting lineup for today's 47 laps at Talladega. Only one playoff driver is in the top 10 to start this race. And that's Ryan Griffin starting third. You have Angel Gutierrez on pole position for the first time in a Nitro National car. He's been recently announced to drive this car full-time next year. He's getting a good head start by getting pole here at Talladega. Ashton Blevins starts second. The aforementioned Ryan Griffin in third. Matt Johnson and Robert Weaver complete the top five. But then, but then you had to go all the way back to Earl Sear in 12th to find the next highest playoff driver. So with that being said, and keeping in mind that these cars are a bit harder to get runs forming, I think Ryan Griffin's in a pretty good position here. Ryan Griffin is in the ideal position. I think that uh, as he was watching qualifying, I'm sure that all those playoff drivers uh, qualifying farther back, I mean, that is a huge, huge advantage to start this race, especially because they're going to spend the first quarter at least of this race uh, running towards mid-pack, and that's where issues happen here at Talladega. If there's going to be a crash, it's going to be towards the middle of the field or towards the back, and that's where all our playoff guys are. So it's going to be a uh, very fascinating, very tense first bit of this race, and we'll see how it all plays out for everybody, especially those in the playoffs. So with that being said, we have 42 drivers ready to chase a victory here at Talladega, 12 of whom are also trying to chase down a championship. And that chase starts here today at Talladega. This is the 1UP Nitro National Series playoffs at the big bad Talladega Super Speedway. And the green flag is mere moments away from getting this great race underway and setting these fans ablaze with some intense racing action here at Talladega. Getting set for a playoff opener, we're probably not going to forget anytime soon. It is Gutierrez and Blevins on the front row with Ryan Griffin right behind. What can he do from P3 on the grid? We're about to find out as they roll up to the restart zone. We are underway at Talladega. A couple guys on that outside line jumping out immediately trying to make something happen. But most of them tough back in because you don't want to be without drafting help, especially in the early stages as Blevins gets the early advantage going in the turn one. Yeah, very wise to just stay in line right now. Let this whole field group up and get some momentum here. And it looks like there's a bit of a gap developing on that outside lane. And we see Earl Sear dropping down to the middle. And, ooh, it's, oh, is it going to work? He's going to get to the bottom. A great move. And here comes Ryan Griffin on the bottom trying to hold out that 72 uh, out to dry. 
and he's, but he doesn't have a ton of help. He might be trying to get a little bit from Wyatt O'Quinn in the 38 as they barrel it off into turn three. They, it hasn't even taken them a full lap, and they are already three wide, several rows deep. This is what we love about Talladega, but it is Ryan Griffin out in the lead of this race, and as he makes his way through the triangle, blocking all three lanes at once, he is going to come across the stripe, and he will lead the first lap, and that is a very important bonus for the 92. Yeah, Ryan Griffin didn't want to waste any time getting out front. Huge advantage in the starting positions today for that driver and a huge advantage on lap one. That one point is going to go a long way here for the rest of the playoffs. And Ryan Griffin is looking to get more today. That's not the only one he wanted. He wants to stay out front for the whole thing. And so far, so good. And there's a move for, th for second. That is the 42 of David Meske. Remember, this 42 car won the season opener in Daytona, has not made the top 10 since. So he needs a rebound. He's mired deep in 37th in the points, needs to make something happen because he knows he is likely not returning to this ride in 2025, and he wants to make something happen of it. But he's going to have to stay tucked in behind the 92. Good move from the 42, though, to get up to second early. Playoff drivers today, they all have blue spoilers, blue side skirts, and blue splitters. So if you're watching for them uh, throughout the field, you can see them. Uh, you can see the 92, you can see the 3 all by himself on the outside lane, and the 01, fourth on the bottom. They've all got those blue spoilers. Keep an eye out for those. And you can see a lot of them moving and creeping their way up closer and closer to the front of this pack. And we've got one that just dropped out of line. Yeah, that's Nathan Meyer in the 77. Looks like he's got his tire going down on that oh 77. He is going to be well off pace going through three and four. He's going to try and nurse it back to the pits without b causing too much damage to that 77. That's a real shame for him. He was gonna, probably going to have a real good day. He always does on these super speedways. But we're going to stay green. Ryan Griffin has led the opening three laps from third on the grid as Nathan Meyer tries to crawl back to the pits. And that has spread this pack out a little bit. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that's a great job from Nathan Meyer to get out of the way and not uh, impact this race. It's a that could be that could have been a very dangerous situation, uh, significantly worse than it was. Great job getting down there and getting into the pit lane to get that problem solved. And here, meanwhile, here comes Vigiera is trying to claw his way back up to the second position. He's going to try and get a little bit of help from Skylar Taylor in the 03 to one Farron Kokar not to make the playoffs. He's his goal today is to try and help the 01 and the 10 gain as many points as they can today. And so far he's doing a pretty good job because he's trying to get hooked up with his regular season champion teammate Cody Goforth in the 01. Yeah, and Goforth kind of moved up. Uh, he used the bottom lane to get up there and then he moved up to the top and now he's kind of stalled out in that uh, what would be equivalent to the fifth position, the second on the outside lane. But he does right have a there. teammate back there to help him. That's good. That's true. Yeah, I think it's time right now. You just kind of want to ride up front. You don't really need to get out there. I mean, you might want to try to steal some laps away from Ryan Griffin, who's been leading every single one of them. Uh, but really, you just got to ride. You got to stay safe. We're still in the first half of this race. Uh, so you just want to kind of be careful here. You don't want to get caught up in anybody else's mess. No, and we do see a few stragglers at the back, but they should be able to draft back up to the front without much difficulty. But uh, getting a run on the inside is Tegan Fox in the 78. They started back in the 28th position, and it has taken them very little time to get to the front of the field, and they're making the first challenge that Ryan Griffin has faced today. Yeah, and there you go on the bottom lane. So Ryan Griffin got stuck in the middle right there, wasn't able to block the bottom, and then Tegan Fox down to that inside lane and now goes up to continue blocking. And there's another car that I saw entering the front five cars. It's Elijah Ironhouse. He's on the outside lane now, but that's another playoff guy. That Always good on the super speed the too. Yeah, so, you know, it's uh, it, it's going to be interesting. And I, I remember Earl Sear was up towards the front. Well, I was saying that everybody should try to just ride where they are. If you can get to the front, try to stay there. Earl Sear all the way to the back of the pack after moving to the outside lane and ending up caught out to dry uh, in a fourth lane. So that is pretty tough for the driver of the three car. We'll see how they are, that team is able to recover. And meanwhile, the last time we were on a super speedway, we had Cameron Brennan win this race at Daytona, and now he is running in the third position in that 86 CLR machine. As you saw Nathan Meyer get back onto the racetrack, he is already one lap down and in danger of losing a second lap fairly soon to the leaders. But focusing back on what I was saying about Cameron Brennan, he 
he's starting to develop himself as a good super speedway racer as well as a whiz on the road courses. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a really good look. I mean, to to be running up front, to be running uh, near the front at any track is solid. And you know, to stay up front at a super speedway, it is a it is a tall tall task because uh, anybody can get a run, anybody can uh, jump out of line at any moment. So to have the car have the uh, wherewithal to stay up front and stay out uh, near the lead um, is always impressive, and we're seeing it here today out of several drivers, um, including our leader, Tegan Fox. And right behind them is the 12 of Henry Thomas, and boy, has he been looking for a win as of yeah. late in that 12 car. He's come close on many occasions, and he's riding a winless streak in one-out competition dating back several years, back to 2020 at Pikes Peak in the Superstar Series. He almost got that Superstar win at Montreal, and he almost got a Nitro National oh. win at Trois Rivières as Logan Williams now gets kicked up to the high side to make room for Jacob Bujols in the 30 car. Yeah, Logan Williams has just entered the picture uh, in this one up towards the front, but that's going to hurt. Uh, that that car that's being stuck on the outside lane not a lot of momentum right now from that outside lane We've gone from three lanes down to two at least in the front half of this pack And uh, the second lane really has been weakening uh, throughout the last several laps Meanwhile Stevenson and Brennan gonna try and take a run up the inside on Thomas and Bujols But Tegan Fox is gonna come down and block him. This is a very different Talladega race than I was anticipating We've only had two leaders so far in the first eight laps yeah, I'm, I'm pretty surprised by that. I mean, we, we had been seeing uh, recently in the last several times that we've been to Talladega that if you can get a car that's good enough to get out front, um, they would be able to stay out there, but not everybody's car was able to do that. And so far, both of our leaders today, either they both got really good cars, which I don't doubt, but they both get out front and they've both been able to block the lanes uh, very, very effectively. And I think that part of it is just like you were mentioning in the pre-race, the slower speed of these cars, the, the slower runs that they're getting, they're easier to block. And we've got uh, a really tall task on our hands for a lot of drivers who are gonna try to attempt uh, to take the lead later in this race. It's gonna be difficult. You're gonna have to figure out some new strategies to get around them. Meanwhile, Cameron Brennan ducks up the inside of Cam Stevenson to move up into the runner's up position with a push from Jacob Bujols. And how about the Brun, this that car on the inside, fifth car on the inside, now leading that inside line, that blue and white number 25. That is Abe Zhao in the 25 machine. That car is only making its second start of the season. They, of course, made the race at Richmond with Rent and Smith driving that day. But Zhao, you, you, whenever you put Aguo Zhao in, in your car on a super speedway, you know it's going to run up at the front. And this 25, <laughs> it's mired deep in the points battle, only made one race prior to today, and it's now making an appearance in the top five. Yeah, and this, this car started in the 40th position today. It took 11 laps, and now Eguo Zhao is up into the fourth spot uh, and fighting for the chance to take the lead away from Tegan Fox. So a fantastic job uh, from that team preparing a really great car in the draft today. Yeah, and I'm very, very excited to see what he can do full-time next year at the helm of that 12 car that Henry Thomas is currently driving. He's already slated to replace Thomas in that car as Thomas moves up to the Superstar Series next year. So I'm very excited to see what Zhao can do full-time. But for now, he's making the most of every opportunity, currently hanging tough in fourth, but he's going to move on Blair in the 09, getting a push possibly from Martinez, but I think the 47's got other ideas. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go three wide for that third position right there. And boy, this this lead and this group within kind of the top five, top ten is really spread out. You haven't, uh, you rarely see this kind of thing at Talladega. Usually you've got several lanes uh, that are all pushing to try to take the lead for their lane. But right now it's looking a lot like a race maybe in a Michigan or, a, or a, an auto club or, you know, one of those big tracks of Kansas, Vegas, you know where you get a look like a lot of drafting but not really these trains not really the the pushing and the shoving that you see um and right now that's what it's looking more like within that top five or top ten cars yeah this is very different from what we expected going into the weekend here in talladega at least for the nitro national series cars but other than that top four who have broken out in single file 
four of each, one of each, one, four cars of four different manufacturers, I might add. But as Martinez now dives to the inside, trying to get makes make a run going, they're they are three wide right behind them. Although Robert Weaver in that 66, he's now broken out of that three wide. As has Wyatt O'Quinn. They're going to try and catch up to the back of this train. Yeah, this is a, a good good move from that 47 car right there. You know, it's interesting. Everybody's having to adapt and learn. Uh, how to make passes once you get up in the top five. I mean, we see three distinct trains right now uh, back farther back than them. Uh, but in the top five, there's a lot going on that, that is kind of unheard of. Uh, brand new territory for everybody. Who can adapt the best and who can make it work for them? And honestly, we're not seeing a lot of the comers and goers that we normally see at the Super Speedways no. because Tegan Fox has been out front now for about 10 laps straight. So this is that's almost unprecedented at Talladega. We've never had someone lead this many laps in a row at a Super Speedway like this. So Tegan Fox must have a very strong car for this race. And keep in mind that this, car, this team and driver had a dreadful start to the 2024 season. Three DNFs in a row to start the season. They've since leveled it off. But wouldn't this be a great way to rebound with a win potentially here at Talladega? Oh, absolutely. A win uh, solves all, <laughs> as some say, in the garage area. So yeah, Tegan Fox really enjoying that clean air out there. And how about Jacob Buholz in the second position right now started 35th in this race and right now has just been riding in second place i think that's a great spot to be just hang out there learn what your car can do and see what you can do later in this one yeah strong run for Bruholz, and he's going to take over that car full-time next year as well so he's going to move up from the turbo truck series to race that 30 car full-time in 2025 he's getting a great start on it right now and look at keon daly he's now joined the conversation in the 24. He's now moved past Zhao and Weaver to move up into the fourth position to join this train. Remember this car won last time out at Michigan with Ben McDonald behind the wheel. Yeah, Keon Daly car. Hard to miss there in that third position on the outside lane. Now second on the outside lane, but I'll tell you what, this 47 car has been showing some muscle. Now going past the 30 car for the second position, it's been a, a, a very slow and methodical uh march towards the front for the 47 but i think right now in second place uh this driver is going to be looking for a shot at the lead in the coming laps and remember martinez started last today so it just yep. goes to show you while we had well it's been taking a little longer perhaps for people to get from the back to the front than we normally see it, it's still possible and martinez is proving it but Martinez did lose out on that second position to Robert Weaver, and now we're probably going to lose a few more spots to Blevins and Ironhouse. But th this has been a very interesting race at Talladega, unlike anything we've seen here before. But no, no, no shortage of excitement despite that. For sure. And, you know, the things that I'm noticing are that it's hard to keep the car on the bottom uh, coming out of the corner, we see a lot of people w going wide out of uh, turns two and turn four, which is pretty typical here at Talladega. Uh, you know, you just you want to keep it down there, but a lot of these cars slide up wide uh, to keep that momentum. Momentum is absolutely huge today uh, as well. So keeping that momentum, you'll see all of them go a little bit wide out of the corner. That's allowing people who are running the outside lane to get low. And I think that the bottom lane through the corners is preferred today. That's where we've seen a lot of the passing done. And that's where uh, Nicky Martinez got bit just a few laps ago because that 47 car was on the inside, moved to the outside, and then a few others snuck low. And now the 47 is dropping like a rock heading towards the back of the pack. Another thing I wanted to point out while we were talking about that is the Ferenco cars have arrived. Ryan Arnold in that 10, that bright green number 10, now up into the third position. Cody Goforth up on the outside, or in the middle lane, I should say, in the 01, currently riding in about eighth or ninth. But Ryan Arnold making his first playoff appearance here in 2024 he wants to make the most of it today as Blevins now trying to make a move on Tegan Fox to do not to make a real challenge out of it first time we've seen a challenge for the lead in about 15 laps yeah and look at this on the inside lane through the center of the corner that's just a shorter way around the track so you're going to get a better roll through there and 
Wow, that was interesting. It looked like I thought that maybe uh, that car would get some help through the straightaway, but the 32 went way low. So they're still side by side, and there, it looks like Tegan Fox is going to lead this lap. And they're about but, to catch the lap car of Meyer as well. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Through the bottom, so the 21 down there on the bottom is losing the help from the inside lane. They can't get organized uh, on the inside lane behind that 21, so we'll see what happens. We stay side by side, and here's the lapper. And I think Tegan Fox is going to get a bit of a break here from Nathan Meyer because Meyer is going to stack up the middle two lanes. Uh, yeah, Tegan Fox just got an early Christmas present, I feel, from Nathan <laughs> Meyer because that it, that interference from the 77 has allowed Fox to maintain the lead, hasn't, hasn't lost it since lap four, and Tegan Fox is putting on possibly the most dominant performance at Talladega we have ever seen. Yeah, and remember about that Nathan Meyer car, I mean, it just a, a, a low low air pressure on the tire coming into the pit lane. I mean, that's all that took that 77 car out. So that car has not lost any speed. And so far, everybody has been fast enough to stay in the pack. So I expect that 77 car to stick around for a little while. Um, and that's just uh, how it's going to be. So Nathan Meyer, one lap down, but sticking around uh, in the front of the pack. He's actually two laps down because he lost oh, one lap. Yeah. He lost one lap in the pits and another one just now to the leaders. But he's still hanging in there, like you said. He hasn't lost any speed. I expect him to stick around, like you said. But some new challengers now making our way to the front of the field. Here comes Stevenson to the inside of Tegan Fox for the race lead. I wonder if this one's actually going to stick this time. I think it will. And coming through the trioval, we're going to have our first lead change in about 20 laps. Stevenson to the point. Yeah, and you could see how tightly together everybody was staying on that inside lane. The outside lane is really discombobulated right now. We've got a bunch of cars kind of, uh, they're two lanes splitting, you know, they're not really that tight up against each other's bumpers. The inside lane has been pushing forward, and they were all organized on the bottom, and that it allowed a lead change. So Stevenson out front now, but but be careful because Nicky Martinez is right there, and so is that 62 car. Yeah, Jensen Nomina is the car I was going to, I wanted to mention making the in that 62, making the playoffs in his rookie season. We don't know what's going to happen. We know he's going, well, we actually do, he's going to Sanders Performance Autosport next year is Jensen Nomina. So that is going to be a great landing spot for him next year, being teammates with Cameron Brennan for 2025. But I think Nomina is, wants something to prove in his rookie's campaign while he's still at the team he's at. And he's getting a push from an alliance partner in Eric Monaco. As we make our way further back, we see Martinez and Fox getting hung up on the outside. Yeah, and that's just tough. You get so close to that wall and you start to lose momentum. You feel like you have to get off the gas. You, you let it breathe a little bit and then everybody's going by on the inside two lanes. So the 47 escapes disaster, but now has lost several positions by doing so. Here comes Nomina to the inside from a push from Logan Williams. So Nomina's gonna try and cover things off, but that opens the door for the 83, trying yeah. to find a way to the inside, and he will do so. I think Williams is gonna get the better of Nomina across the strike. Yeah, it certainly will. So Williams to the lead, at least for now. So since Tegan Fox has lost the lead, we've had several lead changes. Uh, we've had people uh, getting the lead and then moving up the track and then losing it pretty much immediately. And that's more of a traditional Talladega that we see here. Maybe the intensity is picking up. Maybe throughout the first bit of this race, uh, we saw some drivers holding back in this one. Uh, or we just saw that Tegan Fox had an incredibly good car and we need to watch out for that car uh, later in this race because nobody could pass. Um, so we'll see what happens right now. But now two Team Duke cars uh, leading this race one and two out front. Wow, a, a slamming of the door from Braden Varga. We're about to take the halfway lap. We just did. Logan Williams leads at the halfway lap. And speaking of the guy in third, Kev Shearer had an early accident at Michigan that took him out of the running there. I'm sure he wants to rebound to get his playoffs started right. He's currently doing a good job of it, running in the third position, but I think he's going to lose it here because Nick Breeding in the 76 is trying to make a move, but he's got no help down there, and I think Shearer is able to cover him off because of it. Yeah, we're seeing that strung out top five uh, happening once again with the 83 and the zero out front. Not sure um, if it's just that they're working together or what's going on here uh, to cause this, but 
Um, yeah, the first five to ten cars are getting strung out now at Talladega, and we'll see if the 76 gets any help, and, and once again, no help on that bottom lane. Uh, so it's going to be fascinating to see how this all plays out and who is able to figure this one out uh, to get a run to the front. So far, anyway, it is becoming Logan Williams' race at the moment. But he does have a teammate to help him, Braden Varga. Those two are probably going to work together for about as long as they can. And I think we're getting contact at the back of the field. We're, uh -oh. uh, we're, it's hard to see who is involved in that. I don't think our cameraman picked it up in time. So we're going to find out in a moment. But I do believe we're going to get caution on the speedway for the first time. Yes, the lights are on. It's a race back to the flag now. And... Looks as though, yeah, we got, we do have a caution on the speedway. We got multiple cars involved. Ryan Reed, our, one of our playoff oh, contenders, and Riley Hooper, another one. Oh, man, and that is not what you want to see midway through this race. Not any time to recover in this one. And, yeah, two playoff cars involved. Earl Sear is back there. I don't think any damage. Oh, and Keon Daly has a lot of damage Robert as well. Weaver this, this in the 66 one. as well. Yeah, this, this impacted a lot of cars towards the back of the pack, so we'll see how it all plays out and where everybody shuffles into the order. They came across the line three and four wide, as they typically do here at Talladega Super Speedway. And the thing about this is, normally halfway through a race at Talladega, you'd expect these guys to come down pit road, top off on fuel, make it the rest of the way. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think they're running slow enough where they're going to try and gamble on making the entire race on a single mm. tank. It's interesting, yeah, and it's, since it's so difficult to gain more positions, and of course we have a restart coming up that's just going to make it more chaotic and more uh, higher likelihood of a crash happening. So yeah, maybe you don't want to sacrifice that track position and you want to try to push it all the way to the end. Tires are a non-issue today. So, it, hey, I mean, I, I commend the effort. We'll see how it goes when they cross, uh, when they pass this uh, pit lane right now. But I think that that's, you're probably right, it looks like. Yeah, nobody's, nobody's coming in nobody's at the front front. anyway. I think you're going to see the damaged cars come in, yeah. at least. But one good one, one positive about this is that Nathan Meyer is going to get one of his two laps back. He'll get the free pass under this caution. But yeah. for Robert Weaver, Bronson Minnick, Keon Daly, and especially Ryan Reed in that 28, his day looks to certainly be over with that amount of damage on the 28. Yeah, aerodynamically, and then also I'm sure there's some damage mechanically with that vehicle as well. We'll see what happens soon, but I, I agree. I tend to agree. I think that Ryan Reed uh, has bit it early in this one, and there he goes. So that's going to be a tough start to the playoffs. We knew that it was possible with some of these playoff drivers here at Talladega, and unfortunately for Ryan Reed. Yeah, so you see, this is where it starts. It's four wide situation back here, so I'm surprised this honestly didn't happen sooner. But, oh, I, it, it looks as though it's Weaver and Hooper side by side. The teammates get oh, together boy. at Robbers Racing. Yeah, just not enough room at all. And then Earl Sear had a, a masterful job, I mean, a magician job of getting through that crash. It all happened right in front of that three car. And then the seas parted. There were several others there as well that got through. It looked like Arnold. Uh, and a couple more so yeah that is a that is an incredible job from those cars but the others that were involved that is a tough situation just not enough room in the middle of the track for all of them and john mcfade and another driver out of the race as a result of this crash tough break for him but especially for the playoff guys taken out early here it was just the slightest of touches among teammates wasn't it hooper and mm -hmm. weaver they get together pinching upping into the wall and then Hooper slides down the track right into the path of the 27 and 28. Yeah. That's just not that's just not a not a good situation for any of those guys. But it like considering that we're at Talladega, that could have been a much bigger accident. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, it was just a couple of cars that everybody scattered to try to avoid it. It happened really slowly in the middle of the pack. That everybody was able to see them going up the track and then hitting the wall so everybody jumped down and as soon as they kind of switched directions and went all the way down the track uh that is when things went bad for several of those other cars but um yeah three retirees in this one uh that we will not see for the rest of today at least and hopefully uh we can see some really good weeks out of ryan reed and riley hooper uh to try to get back in this playoff fight they're going to need it because there's only six races remaining after today, and they're going to be in a very deep hole. 
going forward. Ryan Reed at least had the cushion of having two wins in his pocket, so that gave him 10 bonus points entering the playoffs here, but th that's going to be erased and then some with this accident, so... Unfortunate to see, and another thing I'm a little concerned about is for the Robert Weaver car, for Bronson Minnick, for Keon Daly, and a few others, because this is, a, like you said, this is a very aero-dependent racetrack. If they can't stay up, stay in touch with the pack, and if they can't keep minimum speed, they'll also be done for the day. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's going to be pretty easy to lose the draft here, and, and today is no exception to that uh despite our uh, slower speeds that we've been seeing out of these cars i mean it's just going to be tough to stay in it and then as soon as one of those cars if they were to make it up towards the front as soon as you get in that clean air um you're getting a, a ton of new forces on your car that um you know are going to be trying to push it to towards the ground um but if you've got damage it's going to be uh, really tough you're going to be punching a bigger hole in the air uh, and it's going to just slow you down when you're out front so you'd have to make your move perfect perfectly timed if you want to have a shot at winning it with that kind of damage yeah we're looking through the field here most of these cars are still intact and gonna live to fight another day but it's these guys back here minic yeah. Weaver, Daly, and I feel bad for Nathan Meyer as well. He's going to be stuck behind them, and he's going to have to find a way around them pretty quick, or else he's going to lose the draft again. Yeah, he's going to have to drop down low um, and then get past those cars to try to stay in it and hope for another accident or another caution period uh, so that he can get that second lap back and join the fight for the win again. But the lights go out on the pace car, so we will be going green next time they cross the start-finish line. Logan Williams <coughs> is your leader. He has not his teammate anymore behind him. He has Wyatt O'Quinn in second place now. Kev Shearer third. Ryan Griffin. Mike Edwards complete the top five. Then you find Braden Farga in sixth place. Then Gutierrez, Breeding, Zhao, Brennan. That is your top ten. And other than Nathan Meyer, we're going to have everybody still running on the lead lap. Although, with some of those damaged cars, I wonder how long it'll stay that way. Yeah, and that's going to be interesting for Nathan Meyer. Um, if they are going to, if those cars do end up going a lap down uh, just by virtue of speed, um, he's going to have to pass them so that he could get that wave around and be in that free pass spot uh, coming. Uh, come the next yellow flag we'll see if we do have one uh there's been far and few few and far between uh here today uh the first one coming uh around what was that lap 26 so right, here we are on yeah. lap 30 only 17 to go um we'll see how it we'll see how it happens uh but i'm not sure if we will see another crash in this one we're coming to 17 laps to go and my fear well it's not so much a fear it's more of a a note to make is that if those cars don't make minimum speed, they'll likely be parked before Meyer has to worry about them lap being lapped again. So I don't think that's his concern. His main concern is keeping up with this lead pack mm -hmm. and his trying to get back past those leaders because that yeah. is going to be a big concern of his. Yeah, so we'll see what happens on this restart. I expect a lot of these drivers to drop down to that bottom lane that's been the dominant lane today. Uh, so as soon as they get that green flag and they're able to move, uh, watch for a lot of these cars to drop low. We'll see if Logan Williams uh, can anticipate that and keep the lead uh, after this. But you see a lot of blue spoilers now up towards the front. That's how it always worked out. The cream will rise to the top even at Talladega. And the green flag is back out. We're oh. underway once again. We've got people jumping on the outside lane. That's not what I was expecting, but maybe there they Shearer, go. Maybe Shearer got a bad start and Griffin's yeah. trying to capitalize on it. But either way, we're underway once again. And you, like you said, everybody's trying to dive to the bottom of the racetrack. Logan Williams and Wyatt O'Quinn are definitely doing so. But look, you can already see the separation starting to form between these damaged cars and the main group. And, a sp and Nathan Meyer is starting to lose touch already. Yeah, Nathan Meyer just trapped behind them. That is unfortunate. There he, he goes, he's making to pass, a move. But. Past the 24 now, but he's not going to make much ground up, I fear. But now Wyatt O'Quinn dives to the inside of Logan Williams, trying to take the lead for the first time today. He's getting a distant push from the 60 of Mike Edwards, who we also have yet to see up at the front until now. So, yeah, that, 
Sorry, I was just going to say that inside lane, it's more uh, condensed, more organized than the outside lane. And now they're going to dump that 60 car. Staying in the middle lane is the 60 car, and O'Quinn will lead this lap, but it might not last for long. We've got a bunch of hard chargers right behind. Yeah, and Braden Varga just got chopped off. Meyer's doing everything he can to slice his way through this traffic, but he's already several seconds off the lead group. I don't think he's going to hang in there. That is so disappointing. But the good news is, since we've seen him up at competitive speeds in the pack, he won't be parked for losing the draft. He'll just, you know, lose the draft. But mm -hmm. up at the front of the field, it continues to be wide open up front with Brayden Vargas second and Angel Gutierrez in that 72, our pole sitter, who is yet to lead today. He's running in third. Yeah, we've got two similarly colored cars uh, out front right now, but only one of them. Uh, is in the playoffs, so you'll see that zero car. I, I'm thinking that he's probably just going to ride there in that second position for now. I think that that's a really great spot uh, to be in second, third, or fourth. If you could just wait out right there, um, not lose that position, and then wait until f to farther, closer to the end of this race, um, you might put yourself in a really great uh, place uh, to c c to finish this one off. Yeah, but I don't think some of these guys at the back, I don't think their race is going to be continuing much longer. I mean, if Benjamin, if Benjamin Snyder also lost the lead group, and that's disappointing, but if he, Minnick, and Meyer can team up and start working together, they may be able to avoid the death sentence. But for, mm -hmm. for uh, Robert Weaver and Keon Daly, I think it's going to be too late for them, as Wyatt O'Quinn leads another lap across the line, this time with Gutierrez in tow. And now we've confirmed it, Keon Daly has lost... The, the ability to continue in this race. He has been black flagged for a minimum speed violation, and he will be out of the race going forward. As look who's back in the mix. It's Tegan Fox. In that 78, we're getting a look at Keon Daly. He's struggling along. So is Robert Weaver. I think he might be parked soon, too. But back at the front, Tegan Fox trying to find their way back to the front of the field, getting underneath Wyatt O'Quinn here. Yeah, and this could be dangerous. We saw this car earlier today show a lot of speed. Uh, and that 78 car was able to stay out front for an extended period of time. And now Tegan Fox is going to get it right back away from Wyatt O'Quinn. So this could be dangerous for everybody if they're not able to pass Fox quickly in this one. Absolutely, yeah. It's going to be really tough because Fox is back where that car should be. And Keon Daly pulling out of the race. And I think Robert Weaver is going to be joining Keon in the garage momentarily which is a really tough break because that 66 has had no luck as of late. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. You're right. Elijah Ironhouse has also lost the lead draft in that eight, and that's critical for his championship hopes. So he's going to need another caution to catch back up. I don't know if one's coming, though, considering the tame nature of this race. It... This has been a very weird day at Talladega, but one thing's for sure. This 78 is on rails. And soon they might have their teammate to play with in the 62. Yeah, this is going to be good. And that's a playoff uh, contending teammate as well for Tegan Fox. And it looks like that's going to happen right now with Nomina going to the inside lane and making that move up into the second position. So this could be really good for the two team cars uh, towards the front. But we'll see how long it lasts. Wow, a door is slammed for that second spot. And I think that Nomina had to think better of it right there uh, before getting crashed out of this one. It's getting intense uh, here in the closing laps. 11 laps to go at Talladega and, and Kanalka forced the door open on Nomina. And that also opened the door as well for Cam Stevenson to find a way back to the to the front of the field but here you see Meyer Snyder and Minnick they're all working together to avoid losing to avoid getting black flagged I think they're gonna be okay Elijah Ironhouse might fall back and join that group as well but Tegan Fox what what more can be said about this amazing day here at Talladega by Tegan Fox already led them far and away the most laps of anybody today and coming to 10 laps to go they're in a fantastic position you know, and, and hopefully we get to remember this day as, wow, Tegan Fox dominated this race on the way to a victory, but that's not always guaranteed, especially here at Talladega. Anything can happen, and we've seen this car lose the lead before in this race, so it could, uh, it's absolutely possible that the 78 won't be leading come the checkered flag. So it, it's, I mean, we see Nomina, who was just running up front, now all the way in the back of the field, 
um, and struggling to stay uh, even within part of this draft. So yeah, and there's I think a three wide move for second. Yeah, and I think that 62 has damage on it somewhere. He must have picked up some damage along the way because he is quickly falling back. And I think he is going to lose the lead draft. That's a shame mm. for Jensen Nolan, another one of our playoff contenders, having issues early. But one who is not is Earl Sear. He is up to second place, chasing down Tegan Fox as we hit nine to go. We saw this three car earlier get towards the front and then move to the outside lane. And once again, that car is going to get stuck on the outside. Um, and it's just not going to work out. Yeah, look at this. A lot of damage for that 62 car on that left and right side door. I wonder if there was contact with the wall and another car. Uh, that is tough, tough, tough for Jensen Nomina. And another one that might be in trouble is Cody Goforth, our regular season champion. He's the, run, he's the one directly ahead of the 62. He might, I think he's gonna be okay though, because he's gonna just, he's gonna get a huge draft up onto the back of the 25 and the 12. So it's gonna take a lot of effort for Thomas and Goforth to get back to the front, but at least they'll have a chance at it. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is interesting now um, because we've had a couple of playoff cards have individual problems. Um, in this one, you know, Elijah Ironhouse and Jensen Nomina. That's not exactly how I was expecting it to happen. I was expecting uh, one big crash that had a shot at taking out several of them. We sort of had that today, but it has been a little bit more of the small incidents that have bitten our playoff drivers. Yeah, Nomina is probably going to lose this draft. He's probably already has at this point. But look at Meski in the 42. He's clawed his way back up to the front, right up to the bumper. We saw this happen earlier today as well. That 42 is pretty strong, but I think that 78 still got the car to beat unless someone can force a way down to the inside. We have seen three cars uh, lead this race today. Ryan Griffin got out there and was tough to pass. And then Tegan Fox got out there and was tough to pass. The third one was Logan Williams, who led at the caution, lost the lead after the restart. But here they all are, first, third, and fourth. The fastest cars we've seen today, all up front right now, and they're going to be fighting for it come the final laps of this one. And who says it's going to be one of them going to victory lane? We still have about 30 cars in the mix for the victory at Talladega, and we're coming to now to six laps of racing to go. Williams ducks to the inside of Meski for second. Now he is the one pushing Tegan Fox out of turn four. Yeah, and I think that that 83 car, he's just got to get in line right now, build up some momentum, and then you're going to have a shot to pass. We know the speed from Logan Williams is there, and we know that he can make the move to the lead. So we'll see if he's able to do it against this speedy 78 car that we've had all day. Tegan Fox has been incredible out front of this pack. Yeah, Tegan's led almost half the race at this point. Incredible stuff from Tegan Fox. Even if it's not a win, this is still going to be a career-defining drive and possibly one that lands them a seat next year somewhere because we know it's not going to be at this team. But Tegan Fox doing everything they can to hang on. Williams takes a peek to the inside but stays tucked in. Yeah, that was almost a big move right there. Tegan Fox was already moving down the track, so a great block job right there uh, and a great job holding the lead for yet another lap each lap that ticks away each corner that that 78 stays out front is one less opportunity for anybody else to get past them so this is going to be a, a, a great a great story if the 78 can stay out front and right now there's no real pressure because nobody's been making a move we'll see what happens out of this corner how about the man running in third place right now? We haven't seen that car up front all day. Aiden Smith in the 23 machine, the ally car, making a strong push towards the front in the late stages. But now is Williams' time, I feel. Wow. He ducks to the inside, trying to get a run on fire. But Smith goes with the, with the 78. They're going to try and leave the 83 out to dry on the inside. But I think Williams might have an advantage here. It's going to be really close coming to the line at four laps to go. Williams can stay side by side. There's help on the way. It was from the 42, and now it's not anymore. But that inside lane, there is going to be a big push from the 86, from the 3, and they're all on the bottom, and it's not going to work out for Logan Williams, who has to stay down there and is going to stay in that, possibly in that second position, but not going to be enough to get the lead. A valiant effort, but the help was just not in time for Logan Williams. Wow. What a move. We've seen that it can happen. Will it happen in the closing laps? Oh, my gosh. That, that just goes to show the absolute masterclass Tegan Fox is putting on today. 
they could have easily have given up that position to Logan Williams, but they stuck with it, hung in on the outside, got the lead back, and is now three laps away from a maiden win. Yeah, just stayed on the outside lane, which was perfect. I mean, really, you don't need to block that move. You could just stay out there, especially if you're hearing uh, in your ears that the that there's no help down in the bottom lane from your here spotter. Here comes Williams and again, and this time he's got a teammate to help. Oh, this could boy. be this could be it right here because they've also got Jacob Buholz pushing. Now I think the 78 is going to lose wow. it. So three Chevys powered by the Honda of. This, uh, of Tegan Fox and the outside lane. And Williams now, and immediately so went tough. up to cover off the 78. Did not want the same thing happening again, but that opened the door for his teammate to power past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the wrong move, I think, right there from Logan Williams. Went to the outside lane. There was not ever a possibility for Tegan Fox to get back past them with no help. And now Logan Williams is losing positions quickly. So down to third, maybe fourth or, lo or lower. For that 83 car and Earl Sear remains out front coming to lap 46 in this race. Two laps to go from Talladega and Tegan Fox who dominated this race like 26 laps of it looks to be out of it on the outside with no chance. So now who, now the door is wide open for a possible new winner. Earl Sear who's already won twice this season looking for his first super speedway win. Now his teammate's going to try and make a move on Buholz, try and make this an all-team Duke affair for the win. We're coming to the white flag this time. It's Sear, it's Varga, it's Jacob Buholz, who knows how many others. Yeah, and Buholz, we know, has a fast car, and this one ran in the second position for much of the time Tegan Fox was leading in the beginning of this race, and another car, Nicky Martinez now, on the inside lane, and that car has been on fire today, going extremely fast around this track. We've got the white flag in the air, and who knows who's going to win this one. And look who's right behind Martinez. Henry Thomas was last in the pack about five laps ago. He's now in it with a shot at his first win in five years. Cody Gofor is going to give him a push as well. A great recovery from the regular season champion. But I think it's going to come down to if Nicky Martinez can get a good enough run to get past that three car. Well, Martinez has nowhere to go right now because, because the 12 car had been side by side through that corner. So now, ter through turns three and four, Nicky Martinez only has one more shot at it. And it might be too little too late because we've seen the trioval move come before. We're about to find out. Coming out of turn four, into the trioval they come. Martinez with a big run. It's not going to work. Sear comes down the block. So through the trioval they come. It will be career win number three. Earl number Earl Sear number three car gets the job done at Talladega. Wow, and a great job defending in the last several laps of this one. Earl Sear didn't have the fastest car today, didn't lead the most laps, but boy, when it mattered, that three car showed up in the front, and man, a master class, learned all day how to manipulate this draft and was able to stay out front when it mattered, and that is a great way to start the playoff run of Earl Sear in that three car. A great job. Uh, from that driver very very well done and Nicky Martinez as well a great job to be up in the second position at the end there just didn't have the run at the end of the day uh, to get past the three uh, but wow a great job from all these drivers towards the front yeah um, but you got it for Tegan Fox yeah, who's gonna finish 20th in this oh. race yeah, that is just uh, got kicked up at the wrong time <laughs> there's there's Tegan Fox just cannot believe how this race unraveled before their very eyes. But we, they knew that Tegan Fox was there today. We we certainly knew oh that God. car is go that driver is going to be dangerous wherever they land in 2025. But Henry Thomas comes across the line third. A great re recovery for him. Ashton Blevins fourth. Great day for him. And James Ellison. We didn't mention the 31 all day, but he snuck in to finish in the top five at the very end, ahead of Braden Varga who fell to sixth. McClure seventh. Go fourth. Bastin Rimmel, we didn't talk about him at all. He finished ninth, and Mike Edwards completes the top ten. That's more like what we're used to at Talladega. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I mean, that was an incredible ending to a day that was absolutely dominated by Tegan Fox, and uh, a, a huge disappointment for that whole team uh, to not come out on top today, or even uh, within the top 20, really, and that is just... Uh, uh, wrong place, wrong time, uh, teammates working together to get by, and then lost to the eventual winner. 
um, Earl Sears. So, hey, a, another great race at Talladega. I certainly did enjoy that one. Um, and we didn't end up with a ton of torn up cars. We had a few, but not a whole field full of them. So that is a, a great way to come out of Talladega. A lot of money saved. And we are going to move on to the next playoff race, which is going to be another thriller. I'm sure of it. Absolutely. And that next race is going to be a standalone for the Nitro National Series. They're going to have the week all to themselves at Memphis for our for a short track event. And that is going to have its own set of challenges for these guys to try and take on, I'm sure. So, from Duke Antec and from myself as well, we say goodbye from Talladega. We'll see you again next week at Memphis. But until we get there, congratulations to Earl Sear. Pulled one out here at Talladega, overcoming a dominant Tegan Fox to score a third win of the season. No one else has more than one. 